Welcome back, everyone. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomat and Nick Taylor. We're bringing you a special of Come On Now, the podcast. Post-game reaction to Game 2 of the NBA Finals between the Boston Celtics and the Dallas Mavericks. The Boston Celtics took a 2-0 lead in this series, winning 105-98. Let's jump right into it, Nick. We don't want to keep this too long. Give me your initial thoughts of this game. Uh, initial thoughts is what I fucking told y'all it was going to be. If Kyrie Irving it doesn't become Kyrie Irving that he was in that series when he played with LeBron and they were down 3-1 and start putting up 35 to 40 points a game, they're going to be in trouble. If they don't play Tim Hardaway off the bench and he be that X factor that I told you that he probably could be, they're going to be in trouble. They're not hitting any shots. They were 6 for 25 tonight. 20 fucking 3%. You're not going to win any games like that. The Celtics didn't shoot much better. The Celtics are at home and they have the better team. They have the better team so they can afford not to play, hit their threes and get away with it. They can still play defense. I mean, if Porzingis is hurt right now from that, you know, that fall, that might change the series. It, it, it could change. I think the Celtics still have enough. But if Porzingis is hurt, it's, it's, it's going to be a problem. Because he's deterring shots at the rim. He's playing with all his energy. He's, he's giving them something different. He's able to post up. He's, getting, he's, he's making tough shots, making them look easy because he has a 6'8", 6'7", person on him. He gets switches. He's doing everything that you need him to do. If he's not playing, then their rotation goes to seven players. Or six players. So it's Horford. I mean, I mean Horford be starting, and then you have um, Pritchard coming off the bench and um, Hauser. Then they go to seven players, but they're starting five. They're so freaking elite. Even when Tatum is out there, six for twenty-two, um, not playing as well as he can, but he still made it. He had he got twelve assists, a lot of rebounds. You know, six for you know it's horrible shooting, but they are so damn deep that they. Are will stay in the game. So Kyrie Irving don't go nuclear. And this is why I went on Facebook and I had a problem with people. I said Kyrie Irving is getting so much adoration from from the world for a guy who's been the most inconsistent guy in the playoffs. And they're going to be like, what about Cat and Harden? No, they're consistently inconsistent. I don't, I don't count those guys. I, I know what they're going to bring. They're going to be off and on. But Kyrie is somebody who you expect to be on a nightly basis, come and give you 25 points and be that guy who's the second guy to Luka. Or some days, the first guy. He's good enough to be the first guy some days. And he's not being that guy. He's been the most inconsistent guy in the playoffs. And I know a lot of people are going to go on me and jump on my neck. No, because he has highlight plays a lot of times. And that's why everybody puts him in this altitude of players where he shouldn't be right now. He, he's just not there. And that's what I got for you, Rudy. What do you think? So um, I agree with you pretty much on all aspects. I think Kyrie Irving, as talented as he is, is arguably one of the most overrated basketball players in the league. He consistently disappears. He had 16 points a night. That's not enough. No. That's not even, that's not even close to enough. It, it, it's, it's, it's not even remotely in the stratosphere of being enough. The fact of the matter is in the first half, at one point, and I'm looking at the play-by-play play so I can see exactly where it was, but it was 47-46, and Luca had 23. That was with two minutes. That was with 2.16 to go after he hit a three-pointer. I think it 47-46. And he did not score again until, at the, until the, you know, the rest of the half, and they were down three at the half, 54-51. Luca had nine points in the second half. Luca is clearly laboring. You saw him at one point just basically – he he. My problem with Luca is he always cries. He cries after everything. When he falls on the ground and someone he, he believes someone pushed him. He's just clumsy overall. He's he, the way he plays, he's trying to draw this bogus contact and then falls over and goes, ah, and then doesn't get a call and he sits on the ground and he watches the, the Celtics go down the court and score. Um Kyrie Irving has to put up thirty five a game for these guys to have a chance to win. Tonight, if he put up 25, they would have won the game. Um, he's just not consistent enough. He, he was the, he was the exact same way against OKC uh, when he yeah. had, I think, five straight games where he scored less than 20. Yeah, and like then the nine, last yeah, game, he had a big game or whatever. Or whatever, whatever. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, you know, he's like this super. 
it, 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 he's just a superstar tandem. No, they're not. Yes, we know what he can potentially do, but he's in, he's consistently inconsistent. 16 points in game two of the finals is trash. For him. In a seven-point seven game. For him. Like, it's, it's just garbage. It's not enough, and it will never be enough. They will not win a game if he, score, if he averages 16 a game. And the crazy thing was, I know we were in our chat, and I said, if Tatum's averaging 15 a game, they're going to lose the series. And not what I wrote back. Well, 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 not if Kyrie's averaging 16 a game because they have too many weapons around them. Tonight, what do you got? Drew Holiday goes off. 26 and 11. Derek White. Derek White goes for 18. Jalen Brown, the, team, the MVP, oh, has 21 points. and 7. You know, Jalen Brown had 7 assists. I, You know, assists with Boston is funny because it's not – they're not real assists to me. They're driving kicks. The, the, the <laughs> players are so good. Even <clears throat> at him and they shoot it. They, it's not like you – it's like amazing opportunity. Yeah, like there was an assist that Jalen Brown got where he just kicked it to Derek White for a fadeaway three, and it's like it fadeaway three. It's not an assist, man. That's like you didn't create anything. He White wasn't even open. Work. He wasn't even open. White did all the work. You know, and, and so you you have assists like that. I don't know how. And I I'm not going to sit here and speculate how many. And he drove. He, he got a couple people that he dumped it yeah. off. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna speculate on how many Tatum got that were like that because I don't I don't know. I know there was one where Jalen Brown drove right his backdoor cuts Luca. He's ten feet from the rim, and then he kicks it out. You're like, why are you kicking it out? You have a ten foot shot. But I mean, Brown finishes with twenty one. He's ultra efficient. Shoots over fifty percent from the field. Holiday's eleven for fourteen. I mean, and at the end of the day, you know there was a stat they showed early in the game that whoever's leading uh, wins. Well, that didn't happen today because Dallas was leading and they lost. So, you know, I, I, Porzingis, when he came down on that, that weird come down on yeah. P.J. Washington driving to the rim, uh, or it was a rebound. He was coming for a rebound after he missed, I think it yeah, was, or whatever. P.J. missed, yeah. And he missed, and then he comes down weird. And that's the thing about Porzingis that always concerns you. Like, the guy just, he's those tall guys. It's, and it's, that's also the reason why I have so, many, so much concern for Victor Wembanyama because they have the same build. Skinny as hell and tall as fuck. You know, and those types of things happen to those long, lanky guys, and just a weird come, you know, plant. He looked off the rest of the way. You got, now, more, does you got it, more body to mess up, like Yao Ming. Do I think that it matters? No, I think Boston's is better. You know, Porzingis had twelve today, but when he's on the floor, impact. You hate the stat, Dick, and I'm gonna. You're gonna see. You like the stat when it works for you, but you hate the stat when it goes against you. No, plus they, they were plus twelve when he's on the floor. When he's on the floor, they were plus twelve. So he impacts the game in a variety of ways. You know, his length doesn't make it as easy for Gafford and, and Lively. Lively's been largely invisible. Lively, who was dominant, disappeared. Has been invisible because they're not falling back off of him and letting him lobs. Luke is not being. They're actually switching sometimes, and the switch is bad. But when you're staying in front of the guy for the most part, you make him shoot tough shots. So you're living with it. You say, hey, okay. But you don't let the other. So the big thing about it, you know, I'm not calling these players sorry or bumps, but a big saying before, you don't let ducks. You don't let the ducks get theirs. You keep the ducks being a duck. And I'm not saying that these players are bad, but in – these terms of NBA players, they're not the best. They they make their 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 plays off of what Luca does for them. So when the Luca's not making plays for them because they can't get it on their own, then they are ducks, lame ducks. They're sitting there, they can't do anything. You know that's beneficial for the team. So Lively and Gafford, who who lived on on Luca, not switching last series for the most part. Well. The, their guys not switching for the most part. And then uh, Gobert was in a drop, you know, position. And it was like, well, do you come up or you sit back? And then he put the guy on his back. And he just throws the lob because Gobert is like, oh, shit, I got to come up now. And, and Luke is like, well, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> he throws it up. It is a lob. And now Gafford and, and Lively are eight for eight. You're like, how the fuck are they eight for eight? They're catching dunks. Like, they're not doing anything hard. They're just... Big guys who can jump and they can catch lobs and they're dunking it. 
But all of that, that should, you should put them points for Luca. Luca should, should get those points because he created all of it. Like, they those, guys are, those, those guys are useless offensively. They're useless. Like, the, it, it's, the, it's the thing that really frustrates me. When, I mean, obviously, they're not even put in the same, they're not in the you same conversation. Home, you have to wait to get home. Well, what I'm saying is they're not in the same conversation as Rudy Gobert, but in terms of what their status is, but they're, they have no offensive game. They're oh. widely averaged five points a game at Duke last year. You know, um, but he's seven foot tall, seven foot one. He's athletic. You know, he's three shots. I mean, they combine the two of them for seven for 12 for, for 15, 15 and 10. But I mean, sorry, 15 and, and six. So 16 boards combined and 15 points. They were shooting 100% but, last series. Yeah, but they weren't, they were getting nothing but dunks against Minnesota. So, you know, I, this comes down, and you're not, and PJ Washington's not going for 28. Not you know, uh, you know, he did have a 17 points in a good game, but that wasn't 29, 28, 27, like he was doing versus uh, Minnesota. And that was against OKC. That was OKC. Okay, I'm sorry. OKC. Yeah, that was the, the, the free throws that won the series. But Kyrie Irving has to play better. They're not going to, they have no shot if he doesn't play better. I, I am so tired of listening to this guy talk. Uh, like, oh, he was so motivated. Jalen Brown's locked his ass down. Yeah, the whole team. But Jalen Brown's been the primary defender on Kyrie. Yeah, he's been coming over. He's been, you know, I mean, look look at the block shot at the the end that they both, like, they all seem to, P.J. Washington was too worried about looking behind him instead of just going up and trying to rip the rim down. And because he's looking behind him, Derek White and Jalen Brown blocked the shot. White got it initially, and then Brown finished it off. So, but... Jalen Brown has taken on a, a position of defending the best, their, you know, Kyrie Irving primarily. Well, so because he didn't say it out loud, Kyrie's not motivated. See, that's the, that corny crap that they said, oh, you oh, poked the bear. Okay, I guess the bear went to sleep and Kyrie Irving's ready to go home and make some more excuses for why he doesn't win. I mean, I don't want to hear it. You get people going, Rudy, but it's the NBA Finals. He's playing against his old team. The players he should be going. Came, the players that came up under him. Who kind of ran him out of town? Who are better than him? Who have become better than him? They're better than him. They're, yeah. And they're bigger. They're bigger and they're better. So, so, what do you think about Jason Kidd saying that Jalen Brown is the better? It's the truth. Out? I think Jason Kidd knows it's the truth. I think Jason. I Jason Kidd. You know what Jason Kidd did though? He's playing mind games. He's a puppet, I don't, I, I, he's a puppet master. He did it. He did it because his team is not good enough to beat. To be, but Brooklyn. it doesn't mean it's not true. No, that doesn't mean it's not true. But the way he did it was to to cause some problems in the locker room because his team is not good. But why would that? But see, I, I will say this: the, the response of that's why he the, did it. The response of Jason Tatum to that comment was one of sensitivity. I don't think it he was. was he was sensitive. He's he no, was, he's sensitive. You know, he's sensitive. He's hard enough. Why would you have a problem? I don't think it didn't seem, it didn't seem like he had a problem to me. Did to you me. actually hear what he said? I heard they've been trying to do this for they're trying to divide us. Well, why do you feel divided if someone says your teammate's better than you? Yeah, no, because they've been trying to divide them. Who do you but, say? But, they but, be- but again, why do you <laughs> feel why does it why would it even remotely why would you even even no, he's going back to all the other comments? Everybody every year they say they should break him up. You say they should well, break, break him up. up. Break him up is the one thing. Yeah, uh, saying that saying that Brown is better than him they, they is been, another thing. They've been saying they don't play well together. They they, they still well, don't. They, they, they still largely play. don't. They still they, they play. that's how talented they are. They still <laughs> largely don't. If, what, when when Parzingis is on the floor, they're plus twelve. When he wasn't, they were minus five. In this game, Porzingis is the action guy on this team. It's crazy, but he is because he because he spreads the floor so much. They run stuff off of him they, these guys never run crap off each other look tatum is six t- if tatum goes six for 22 versus the miami heat to the celtics win no no if jimmy's not playing, not, a, not with a full roster 
With yeah. the, when the Heat have a full roster, Jimmy, they them six for 22, they don't beat the Miami Heat. But you know Jimmy gets up for that team differently. I know, they, but, but Luka Doncic had 32, 11, and 11. But they don't know Boston like Jimmy and, and the Miami knows Boston. That's different. Again, but you're, but you're asking. I'm, I'm telling if you, if your best player shoots 32% from the field, sorry, less than that. Six for 22, it's like 29% from the field. They're deep. They're deep. Like, you're going to lose that game more often than not. They're deep. You're going to lose. And, and they're point. not losing because they got so many guys around him that can make it can make it look like, oh, yeah, he had 12 assists and nine rebounds. So, yeah, he did, he did other things, and it's all pretty and all that. Oh, they won. But if well, they lost, if they had not- lost this game, it would have been hell. He'd be getting sh- crucified tomorrow, t- yeah. tonight. Yeah. Bill Simmons would be on his thing right now going bananas, saying, there's Jason Tatum again, invisible, disappears, can't put him on his back. He wants to be a top five player. But when it comes down to putting it in the hole, he's 6 of 22. If you want to be honest, these first two games, Jason Tatum has shot like straight trash. 27 point, I'm sorry, it's 27.3 percent. The it's last good. game, 37.5. He's averaging 17 a game right now. Yeah, he's got 17 total assists. He's at what eight and a half assists and 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 10 rebounds a game. Right now, who's your MVP? Jaylen if the series Brown. ends today, who's the MVP? Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. And I, on TV, they said maybe one guy said Drew Holiday, but it's Jalen Brown. Yeah. He's taking up the most responsibility and scoring. They have to, you had to score to win. Yeah. You know? Um I think the series is over in five. So, I still think that. Yeah. And there's nothing that makes me think anything different of it, though I would my I would consider sitting for singers for game three. So we I, both, I would consider sitting him. You might have to. It depends. I mean, they usually <clears> travel <throat> and I know they usually get an extra day or two. They haven't lost a game on the road in the playoffs. <laughs> I know they just got a couple. They just got two days extra right Let's now. See. What's, probably, the, what's, the, what's the schedule? So they probably I, mean, I would think it's they Tuesday. Just got they just got three days now. So yeah. they probably play on Tuesday, even though they travel. They play on Wednesday. Oh, so, all right. So, you know, you can, wait. You can, see, you can see how Porzingis feels in a couple Porzingis, of days. Okay, if they play Tuesday, I'd sit him. But if, he Tuesday, if they play Wednesday, you, 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 you look play. at him, you see how he feels, you see how he goes through the walk through on Tuesday. Because and, otherwise they play Friday. Yeah. So you might give him five days off to play. I, so I, how we felt was uh, that we both feel like Jalen Brown is better than Jalen. We both always, feel like we, so we both feel like we've been We've been arguing this for the past. One thing that me and Rudy have actually agreed on, we don't agree on much, but the past five years we have agreed on, or three or four years, something yeah. like that. I I Brown. Jalen Brown being a better player out of the two. We just say that Tatum gets the offense ran through him, so he gets a little bit better numbers. But And then I had other people say, well, because Tatum's getting double. No, he's not. No, he's not. Double. He don't get No, he's not. He's regular help side fucking defense. He beats somebody. He's driving kick. He's regular help side defense. He's not getting double, guys. Shut the fuck up when y'all say that. It's he's dri- not getting double. His regular defense, he drives and a big man rotates and they're there, and he can't finish over them for the most part. That's been his weak point of the game for a long time. And that's what's been going on. He's not getting double, guys. Jalen Brown is not They all – you can't double their team because you'll get killed if you do it to them. So he's not getting double. So kill that narrative. He's getting doubled and triple. He's definitely not getting triple. Team. So people who said that one, Gilbert Arenas, shut the fuck up, please. He's not. He's, the, the, if he's you double the these guys, Derek, Derek White can go for 35. Every any given night, he done it before. He so he showed it, against, it. He showed it against us in Miami. <clears throat> right. he, he did it against us. So did God. you see when they? Did you see when Pritchett guarded Luka Doncic? Yeah, and he couldn't and he couldn't make the buckets over him. Yeah. He's got no. He's got no lift. He looks. He yeah. looks. He looks. He went for all for twenty one. Yes, eleven he's, rebounds, he's, eleven he's, assists, triple double. But he looked. Fun. But you know what he had? You know what he had? No assists again. Eight turnovers. How much assists he had? Eleven, but he oh, had yeah, eight turnovers. Left. Yeah, one last. He had he was he had a triple double tonight, but he had eight turnovers. Okay, I, I guess turnovers happen to all okay. the best players. Luca Doncic. Luka Doncic. I, I guess all the best players have the have big turnovers when they're car- when they're when they're carrying when they're carrying the team. Yes, he, um, he has to be better. But he looks he looks beat. He looks exhausted. But the crazy part was he got he got rest this series. He didn't look like this last series when he was whooping up on on Minnesota. He didn't look like this because we coming into that series against Minnesota. They were talking about, oh, he's 
He's a little bit banged up. And then he started beating the ass and nobody talked about it. And now all of a sudden he get the rest, a lot of rest after he bust the ass and nobody worried about it. And now we're saying, oh, is he banged up? We got to pick. We gotta oh, pick he, him. he was been banged up. They had him marked as initially as questionable no. or doubtful for tonight's nice game. Minnesota series, nobody said anything. And they, well, got, they, they did, but not to the extent because he was slicing and dicing them. And now he got six, six or five days rest after that series. Seven, I don't know. It was a lot of days they had in between. No, they had, they had a week. They had a week off, and yes, and I know, I, because I didn't know what to watch. I didn't know what well, to watch. Yeah, it, it, they they killed the momentum of the playoffs having this type of gap. I think so that the it's NBA. Like, I, they, I, I hate it. I hate it. I, I don't know why. I don't want, know why. Go ahead. You expect the other series to go longer, and then you want them to but be. Adjust. You want everybody to be revitalized for the next series because it's the finals. It's the biggest series. You want your best players feeling the best. You want them to be healthy. You want them coming out there providing their best. So that's why that's a little break in between. But hey, but why not adjust the series and just jump into the next one? Give them two or three days and move. Get, let's get going. I know they have schedules and all that crap, but I, I just I don't like the fact that this has not been a pretty brand of basketball. Like, there's not the, the basketball being played. I mean, has not been all that great. Dallas Mavericks shot 23.1% from three. The Celtics shot 25.6% from three. Legs getting, legs getting tired. Like, you're, but what are you tired from? You had a week and a half off. You had a week off. You should be tired. Sometimes you get tired by not playing. <clears throat> you, you get tired by not playing. Sometimes it happens. So that's why you should just jump in and keep playing. I mean, heck, I mean, if you see behind me right now, that's some Panthers stuff. They won last night, but the Panthers look like certifiable garbage. I, for most I, of that game, I actually watched a little bit. I saw that Edmonton had like terrible. They had like twenty four shots on goal. They looked terrible. And the Panthers had nine goals, nine shots on nine goal. shots. But they, were up but they made their shots. <laughs> it's a, it's efficient. Like they were efficient in their in their opportunities. But overall, in the first two periods of that game, they got absolutely they got their asses kicked. Like beat to the puck. The goalie was amazing. But that's like the same thing here. Like these teams look like they haven't played and they. They look tired, especially Dallas. They look like they're beat, and and then they're playing like it. Uh, you know that shot that Pritchard hit before the end of the third quarter was a big one. I mean, it it, it ended up being pretty 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 important. They cut it down a couple times. But you see the Celtics are up fourteen with three minutes to go, and they damn near give the game away. Well, Tatum was terrible down the stretch. Oh God, he shot was okay. Okay, one going he right. Close to the rim to dunk the ball. Did he even reach the rim with that? Whatever the hell that was. I don't know. All I know is spiking him to the ground. All I know, people said that 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 Brown can't go left, but he went left and finished left. Yeah, he had a layup at the end. They made it a seven yeah. point game. That's yeah. still the game. Yeah, he still can't. He had six turnovers, but I mean, he still can't go left. <laughs> I acknowledge his weaknesses. I mean, I know what his weakness is. He can't, he's let, going left is a problem for him, but. When he shoots the ball from within 17 feet, it usually goes in. Um, so we have game three on Wednesday. What are your thoughts? So this won the first by 18. They won this game by seven. Cool. This game the Mavericks played better in, but yeah. the Celtics pulled away in the second half. Uh, I mean, Kyrie hasn't beat this team in four years. Boston was, 12, had lost. was it 11 or 12 in a row? 11 or 12. Boston haven't lost on the road the whole playoffs. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if they swept them. Everything telling me that I should pick Boston, but that means I should go Dallas. That's what that's telling me. I know how this shit works, man. So everything I, that's telling me to go with Boston because of those streaks, streaks eventually end. And um, I gotta go with. I'm gonna go with. I, I'm gonna go with. How many? Go with how Dallas. many shots? How many shots does Kyrie Irving have to take? I don't. He has to take 25 shots a game. So it has to be like one A and one B. Remember when? So all right. So you remember when the Miami Heat played Indiana that mm-hmm. year, and Wade was getting crucified because he was playing terrible. Mm-hmm. Beginning of the series, and yeah. then he went for like forty, and it was just one A yes. and one B. It was him and Braun. I think Boss was out, and it was okay. one A and one B. You got the ball, I get the ball. You make it happen, I make it happen, and that's when Roy Hibbers was doing that verticality shit. He was giving us hell. Oh, yeah, that was a problem. That was and a real then problem. Wade and LeBron got the floater game going. Both of them got it going. And they were both just started giving it to Indiana because they had no choice. And Dallas is at that point where you have no choice. The ball better be in your best player's hands every fucking time. They shoot the ball unless anybody else gets a layup or a wide open shot. They shouldn't shoot the ball. Derrick Jones should have shoot a three again unless he's, well, even if he's wide open. 
right now. He just hit him all, all last series, but he's going to come back to the norm. He shoots 33%. That's what he does. So last series, he probably shot like 45%. He has to come back down to the norm, and that's what it's looking like. And maybe he get back to some home cooking and he starts shooting the ball better. But that, that they have to play Tim Hardaway. He's, I don't know if he's still hurt or they or Jason Kidd just not like him, but they need him because he, he's, he's streaky. He, he's like Benny Johnson, like Benny Microwave Johnson. He could get hot. At any point, it could go that was for before you, you were like a baby when he was playing. He could go for 20, 25 points. I, I told you, I watch a little film of old basketball, Rudy. I know you think I, I don't watch anything before the 95 series or 96 series of, bas- of, of NBA basketball, but I did. Surprised I, you can see where they were because it was so grainy. Hey, <laughs> so grainy on the screen. I hear enough. I hear people talk about it, so I go back and I watch to see if they really as good as people say they are. Well, I mean, if you look at Kyrie since the Minnesota series, when he shot 23 shots in game one, they won. When he shot 20, 16, they won, but that was the buzzer beater from Luka. Otherwise, they'd have lost that game. Game three, he took 20 shots. He had 33 points. Game four, he had 16 points, 18 shots. Game five, he had 27 shots, 36 points. You even look at the series before against the OKC. He had 23 points, 22. They, they won. He had he had his, he had three games where he took eleven shots or less versus OKC. Well, he had nine points or twelve. He had nine, nine, nine and twelve. Like this oh is the guy that they've been blowing up on TV, saying he this, this is the one two punch. No, this is a one punch. <laughs> the best and a two sh- and a two shows up once in a while. This is the best back court. Ever. This is not the best back court. And I've never agreed with that statement. I thought it was the stupidest statement ever because it's like they're not watching. They're not watching because I can look at the, I can look at every every Ooh. game. They he's had like, he's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games with under twenty points in the playoffs. Seven. They, they look at the games where he goes off, and they forget everything else. Everything else goes off. Everything window. else with Kyrie. I don't know why they do that with him. I know why because he's so amazing with the ball. He makes some immaculate plays, like some highlight reel plays that make you forget everything else. But to say that he's a better backcourt than Steph and Clay, do y'all know what they were doing in their prime? <laughs> oh, oh! You mean do they? Oh, you mean they're saying of all time? I'm talking about yeah. this right now. No, they were talking of all time. Oh, that's that's even more ridiculous. That's Dude. preposterous. Ben, in fact, that I, Gundy, come on, Jeff Van Gundy come on. of all time. Jeff Van Gundy or Stan? Because Jeff is Stan, off team. Stan, Stan Van Gundy. I'm well, sorry. Stan's never been the smartest guy in the room, so uh, Dan, you know, Dan's couldn't keep could he, he couldn't keep the job with the Heat when you know. I know who Jeff. He tried to break it back and like, you know, they try to break it back and like, oh, two guys that can go get their, their buckets at any time. I mean, but you still got to well, get well, 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 they can get their buckets at their time better than Clay Thompson can because Clay just catches and shoots the ball. He doesn't do anything with the ball. But and Clay can I, play defense. This generation of defense, I guess. No, Clay was a good defender. We're not going to do that to Clay. Clay. Clay deserves everything now of his, you know, some games we have now. But we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about young Clay like this. We're not gonna do that. Not not today. Never never we're, never, never like Clay Thompson. You know what? We're not gonna talk about T Max saying that 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 Steph Curry is not a top ten player of all time. I'm not gonna talk. Well, that's about stupid that. as well. We're that's that's just that, dumb. That that's Gilbert just Arenas. Dumb. Gilbert Arenas said I don't want to hear any. I, Gilbert Arenas should never speak about basketball. Gilbert I don't care if you played pro basketball Gilbert for Arenas for your whole that, life. I don't Steph care. Curry is not a generational talent. Well, that's ridiculous. You just changed the entire freaking landscape of basketball. Like, we, the, the game is played today the way it's played because of one guy. I guess he's trying to say that, you know, anybody could be 6'3 and be able to do it. No, they're no not. they couldn't. Nobody, well, why aren't they doing it? Then nobody does it. Well, it's the same thing that, I mean, I mean hell, well, you know, I mean, now we got that going on in the WNBA where the girl says, oh, all she can do is shoot. Oh, well, that's all Steph could really do is shoot, but it changes the way you play the game. And if you can't shoot, um, yeah. If you can't shoot today, there's a reason that big guys like Zach Heaney are questionable for the league, even though I think they could be a great I think he could be a great player, is because, oh, he can't shoot twenty seven footers. Well, neither can like ninety percent of the league. Steph's yeah. range is twenty Steph's range. People can take twenty three foot nine inch three point shots with their toes kissing the line wide open. That's different than if you you're asking some guy to shoot it from twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty feet. Yeah, I, I mean, God damn, you, you know, there's a different, there's a difference, and I know we've had this debate on oh, shooting, I but I don't want to go here. I don't want to go. But there's a difference in being a good shooter and being a shooter. Like, yeah. I don't like go here, Woody, but that's why because Carl Anthony Towns thinks he's a shooter. No, he's a shooter. 
He's a shooter. He's a good. He's a good standstill when he's wide the fuck open shooter. No, he still shoots it when people are guarding him because he had that herky jerky on the ground. You can't. You don't know if he's about to shoot it or not, so you can still get it off. But I didn't want to go. His four for thirty two would tell you different. But okay, yeah, I'm mean, <clears> overall <throat> playoffs. Okay, okay, I get that. But overall, he's a good shooter. But I, I didn't want to go here, Rudy. I didn't want to go here because we. I, I think this series is over. I think okay. this series was going to be over in five. Um, I, I'm, I, I, that's what I said in the beginning. I, I could be wrong. They could come back, win both games, and we go back up tied at five. I tied yeah. at two, tied at two, and you could go be, game five, and we'll see. Know I, I know Boston, but, it doesn't, but it doesn't look that way. Boston will get at least one. Boston wins on the road. Boston yeah. wins on the road, yeah, Boston and, and, the and they're heck, they're they've been confident. better on the road. The fact that they won both home games. Now I'm nervous. You know, they don't lose road games, so I, I, I think that they take care of this series in no more than five. And okay, Rudy, and I, and and if and if this continues like this, I think we're looking at Mister Jalen Brown being named MVP. But it could change in Game Three. Who knows? Yeah, it could. Rudy, because if Tatum goes for forty in Game Three and they win, I know, that's totally I know we're going to dive into this in a couple of days. <laughs> I could talk about this all day, but I, I, you know. We're about to dive into this in a couple are you, of days. Is this the most un- disinterested you've been in an NBA Finals in a long time? Um, last year probably would have been, but my team was in the Finals. But <laughs> How could you be disinterested in your Finals that your team is playing in? Um, if my team wasn't playing because we had But, no- but di- what I mean by disinterested, like there's just like no excitement behind this, this NBA Finals. They- even, even the halftime shows that they're doing are so bad on TV. They- it's painful. Yeah, I, I thought this series – we're gonna get a little bit more because they had they had all the storylines. You had Luca trying to get his first title, Tatum trying to get his first title, Kyrie playing against the Celtics. Maybe I'm just old. Maybe I'm just getting then old. Had, then they had Porzingis playing against the Mavericks. Again, maybe I'm just getting old. I don't know because I just don't find. I'm not. I think because Boston is just better. I think if we got Boston versus the Nuggets. That's a that's a, that's I think I would have I would have picked the Nuggets to win that series. I, I would have picked the Nuggets. I was intrigued to watch. I the Nuggets thinking. the Nuggets completely folding in Game Seven versus Minnesota. They, they, they don't deserve to do that. Changed the playoffs. They changed the playoffs. But Rudy, Rudy, we're gonna switch. We're gonna switch it. We're gonna switch that's it. it. It's over. Let's real quick, real quick, real quick, Rudy. Real, real yeah. quick. How do you feel? <laughs> About Caitlin Clark not being on the USA. Oh, you want me to talk about that today? Oh, That's God. what I said. Real quick, real quick. Or did I ask? Uh, or should I, should I pause it? Should I pause it? Should we I'll wait? talk about it. I, I'll talk about it. I think it was tone deaf. I think it was a tone deaf decision. I don't want to go in the direction that I'm going to go, but I'm going to go there. I am so tired of. It's a. Yeah. You want to wait? You want to wait? No, it's it, it's it's that everyone's always offended, and this goes back to I wonder if this is that stupid sexuality because there's five women on that committee and four of them are. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if they are. I, I I don't know anymore who was what. But you got Dawn Staley on that committee. Why is Dawn Staley deciding who plays on Team USA? She's not a coach. I don't know. If she's a coach. I have no idea who the coaches. You think I follow that crap? Do you? Who the hell the coaches? I don't know who the coaches are. Is the, does the coach decide who plays for Team USA for the men? No, Grant Hill does. I thought. Yeah. He left. He left. Like let's okay. Let, let's go. Look, Diana Taurasi right now has worse numbers than Caitlin Clark across the board. So she gets a, a lifetime achievement award yeah, that's to right. be in the be, be on her sixth Olympic team so, when in her sixth, where four years ago. In 2020, she averaged 5.8 points per game in the Olympics. This is, we're going to give a spot to a 42 year old? He's grandfathered in. I don't give a fuck. In. This is not what this is. This is about your, your, the future of your sport and whether they like it or not. And they're saying, oh, the Olympics is not about that. Yeah, you're right. It's actually earned. And Diana, Diana Taurasi did not earn it. Taurasi did not earn that spot. And for those idiots that's saying, oh, she didn't, she didn't, do, she didn't go to the tryout. If Asia Wilson said, I don't feel like going to the tryout, are you not putting Asia Wilson on the team? Yeah. Are, if Brianna Stewart said, I don't feel like going to the tryout, are you putting Brianna Stewart on the team? Yes. The tryout's bullshit. The tryout is semantics. The tryout, 
you know, it's like AAU basketball. You already know who you selected. Yeah. You know who your team is. Could there be a person, two, three guys, that you're on the fence with? Yeah. Yeah. You remember, you came to my tryout for the travel team. Yeah. You knew who was on my team. Unless there was some kid that I'd never seen before who blew me away. It's yeah. like, okay, I want that dude as well. And it, it wouldn't have mattered if it was 12 or 13. We could have picked up 14. It wouldn't have mattered. If that guy is that good, I'm taking that 14th kid. And you're sitting here saying that the woman who's basically made everyone turn on the television and buy tickets, you're not going to have her play on Team USA. Even Lisa Leslie said, how is Caitlin Clark not on this team? <laughs> I'm not the women's basketball expert that Lisa Leslie is. Lisa Leslie played on Team USA multiple times, I believe. I know she played at least once, but probably multiple times. Mm -hmm. The fact that Diana Taurasi made the team as a rookie because she played as a rookie before she'd played any but 10 games of the, you know WNBA basketball. Candace Parker was a rookie. Brianna Stewart was a rookie. None of them came out of college with the actual accolades. Brianna Stewart won national championships. I get it. No one came out with the hype of Caitlin Clark. Yes, Brianna Stewart has multiple national players of the year. She was the four-time MOP for the Final Four. She played on a fucking all-star team in college. They always want to talk about Brianna Stewart. Brianna Stewart played with McDonald's All-Americans everywhere. 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 Hey. You couldn't name another player besides Kate Martin, who you love, who's with the Aces, I love on Kate. that damn team. Love the typical person could not name Hannah Stalky. They couldn't name Gabby Marshall. And beyond that, you have no idea who plays on that team. You know, the reality was is that they actually were missing a starter from that team in the final four in the national championship. A girl got injured in the last game of the season the, on their senior day. One of their better players. People don't even know that. Exactly. People don't even know that. And you're sitting here and, and, you, and you decide, I'm going to put Chelsea Gray on this team ahead of Caitlin Clark. I'm going to put. I don't want to say it, but I would tell you this. Angel Reese should have been on this team, too. Not that she deserved it or earned it, but that you're marketing your damn. This is an opportunity to market, market the WNBA internationally. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Carmelo Anthony were all rookies playing on the men's team. It got smoked, but they were rookies. Why they do that? They did that to market the future of the NBA. That's the future. This is your future. You have an opportunity to put. Go look at the numbers of 2020. You can't look at 2020 because it was played in empty arenas because of COVID. It was played in 2021, I think. 2016, the last time they played the Olympics in front of people, the U.S. team averaged 2,400 people to show up at a game, and they played in a 5,000-seat arena, high school gym, basically. In the prelims, in the round robin, in the actual uh, medal series, the, the quarterfinal semis and, and gold medal game, they played at a 16,000 seat arena. They, they put in 7,000, 8,000, and 9,000 in the Olympics. People didn't, people didn't buy tickets. I don't care what anyone says. The Olympics wants to make, it's still there to make money. It's a business. This is, it's, not, it's a business. NBC wants to sell advertisement. So they may not even put the game on television based on that. If, like, or not. Because where, where the Olympics are in Paris? Yeah. Who's going to, who, who, who do you know will sit up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning to watch Team USA without Caitlin Clark? And they got a buzz now. They got a the buzz. We are watching, we're paying attention, uh, we're tuned in, we're locked in now. Y'all got us, y'all, y'all, y'all finally got us. Clink, clank, damn, are you happy now? Y'all got us here, man. We're watching, we're tuned. No matter if y'all say it's because of, you know, I want to say that, it's, you know, Angel Reese has caused more than y'all, than, than we think that she did. She, she did it. She She's, does something. She can still part. mark, she still she grabs more people than Alyssa Thomas does. And she she's doing her thing this year. She's she's solid. She's having a solid year. Despite everything, she's having a solid year. She's having steals. She's she's getting rebounds, even though most of them are for her layups. She she's scoring points. She's in double figures. She's she's being solid. But 
the part about Caitlin Clark that kills me that people are harping on. They be like, well, she's not even, she can't handle the physicality. She gets hounded more than any, how would I know anybody else could handle the physicality? Because they don't get played as physical as she does. They're not getting guarded 85 feet up the court. They're not getting bumped and pushed off screens every time when they don't even have the ball. Nobody else is getting guarded. They're not getting doubled and triple team when they don't even have the ball like her. You know why you can do that? Because her team is not as good. So if you put on a team with good players where she doesn't have to have the accountability that she has right now on this bad team that she's on, and she really, she's the best shooter, you can put her in a corner, she don't have to handle the ball the whole game like she has to do with the fever. She can sit in the corner and <laughs> use her shooting ability, and you can kick it to her because they're not going to leave her. Or if, they don't leave, if they leave her, she shoots wide open shots. But who would you rather shoot open shots than her? And if they stay with her, guess what? Asia Wilson is sliding down the middle of the room for fucking layups, guys, or Brianna's. They're layups. They're getting that. So the cop, what she has to do for the fever team, she won't have to do for team. For the Olymp- She's the best shooter in the league. Off the dribble, yeah. front, wide open. You think they yeah. have to get her open? She has to get her shots like she does because how she's being guarded and because they don't run offense for her like anybody else to get her open shots like Steph Curry, like Clay Trump. She's not getting staggers and stuff like that to get her open. If they are, they're not setting amazing screens because there are a couple people that's on her every freaking time. So imagine her on a team where you can't put all the attention on her and she has to open fucking shots. Imagine what that does for the team. Or if they do co- collapse on her, other players are getting layups. Imagine what that does for them. She doesn't have to bring the ball up the court all the time and handle the rock. Imagine what that does for her or the team. She's amazing. Y'all, y'all are y'all are put y'all are over She you know you know how we know that she's better than a lot of these players because she's being guarded differently than anybody else in the league. That just shows you. Yeah how good or her impact is on the court. So other days when Steph Curry doesn't score the ball all the time, but you see Draymond gets 12 assists, that's because of Steph Curry. Because they double him, and he passes to Draymond, and Draymond has a 4-on-3. That's the situation, and that's the impact that Caitlin will bring to the team. Did, did you, did you hear? Now basketball to people, because they be all in my – and I be like, yo, I play ball, I know ball. More than a lot of y'all. I, I promise y'all, I should have been a coach in basketball, but it was just that I was good enough to go play professional football. But if not, I wasn't good enough to play basketball at that level higher. But my mind, I guarantee you, is a lot better than a lot of y'all minds when it comes to basketball. My high school coach would tell y'all that I should have been a coach and I could have did it. But I got the opportunity to play professional football at an age where, you know, where I'm going to keep doing it, you know, as long as I can. While I'm young, if I lay on, coaching happens, it happens. But I'm telling y'all, man, the girl is amazing it's, 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 and what she brings on the court and how she. I, I, I want to I read. Okay, we're going to talk. We're, we're here. We're, we're going here. Fuck it. <laughs> we're going here. Fuck it. I, 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 can't, I can't do this no more. Like, I, the amount of petty that exists amongst women against this, I'm going to call it what it is, black women against this woman. And, and black men. I'm seeing a lot of black men who don't know dick about basketball. And I love the response. The response is always, I've been watching the WNBA the entire time. And I've been watching. Man, if you've been watching, guess what? Guess what? They'd have been making money. Because not everybody who says they were watching has been watching. You guys are lying. Because if you were watching, and all people who say, I've been watching forever... No, you haven't, because if you were, this team would not be in the red $10 million a year for 27 years. This league would be making profit, but it doesn't, because you haven't been watching. Since 2000 and probably three, nobody's been watching. And over the past 14 years, nobody's been watching. The damn highest viewed game last year was game for the WNBA Finals at 900,000. Caitlin Clark draws that on a Tuesday afternoon playing at the YMCA. Like, we need to stop this. And so when everyone says, oh, I've watched for Asia Wilson's, well, maybe you did. Yes, maybe But the reality did. is, no, 98% no. of the freaking men in this country and did. people around the country did were not. not. We're not. We were not. We were and not. you know what? Just because I watch a game here and there doesn't mean I'm an avid viewer of the WNBA. It doesn't mean you are, I am, or anybody else. 
But here is the type of bogus nonsense that I get to read on my freaking in, on my Facebook from a woman I know who says, "I'm." First off, did you see what her coach did to her? How in the world does no, you have a, a private text to no, your coach no, no. and your coach tells this to the media as if that woman does not have a bullseye on her back no, no. enough? You're tone deaf. You have to be motherfucking tone deaf. Why would you? Why? She's a savage. She's a saboteur. She's trying to sabotage no, this girl. Hey, coach. Hey, coach, they woke a monster and you tell the media that? Do you not know how the people are going to attack her because of that? She's already been attacked. Why would you do that? What are you doing? But so this was posted. So that coach, realistically, should be fired. She's a fucking idiot. She's the, she has got to be the, they gave her gold and all she's done is shit on it. I don't know what to say about it. it it's, it's comic, it's, it's almost, it's embarrassing. That you wouldn't. Do you remember last year when Kyle Lowry was gone for over a month? We do we have don't. any idea we what the hell was going? What happened? We still don't know to this. We day. still don't know. To this day, you you still never heard Steve Kerr tell anyone what happened with Andrew Wiggins. To you this. still don't know what happens with these guys because these coaches are not stupid. <laughs> They're not sharing personal shit. They're not sharing text between you and the player. Maybe. But you have this brain dead, Maybe. tone deaf coach. Maybe. 10 years, 15 years later, 20 years. <laughs> No, the same day. I'm going to go tell everybody that Caitlin said, hey, coach, they woke a monster. Well, guess what? This is like the Kyrie Irving thing. Did they poke the bear? Why would you do that? Is, 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 is Caitlin Clark all of a sudden going to play better because she didn't make the team? Why would you or do maybe that? are you going to give her 25 shots a game and not 13.2? Why would you do that? <laughs> so I have, a, some, I have someone that I know that posts this crap. And, and writes, I am confused by this. Ma'am, you didn't even try out for the team. But see, obviously, we're tone deaf there because we know why she didn't try out. She was playing in the Final Four. Why'd they schedule tryouts the week of the Final Four? The whole, the whole schedule is all stupid. Like, stop it. And then, so why would you think they would put you on it? I don't know, because they put Diana Taurasi on it? Because they put Candace Parker on it? Because they put Brianna Stewart on it? You were still in school when the pros had to try out. They didn't try out. Miss me with the bullshit. You were also struggling battling the women. You're also struggling battling the women in the league. She had 30 on Friday She's against the women in the league. She's second or she's like fourth in the WNBA in assists. Yes. She's like 15th or 16th in rebounds. She's a six foot guard <laughs> and she's 13th in scoring. Yeah, she's struggling so much. If not for the turnovers, mm. you wouldn't have shit to say. Yes, it's only the And yes, is her shooting percentage down? Yes, because she's searching for shots she cannot get because her team creates no actions for her. No. So she's taking 29 and 30 footers on the run to get a shot off because her teammates run nothing for her. I watched. Or, so or she says, her teammates enough to guard them. To like, guard them. They suck so bad. And this was the final word. You think those other teams are going to play nice? This decision was also for your safety? Man, get the fuck out of here. Your safety? Like, this is the type of dreck that I read from black women on my Facebook page. Because my, my Facebook is 85% black. Because I'm a five member of Five Beta Sigma. Rudy, and Rudy has a black wife, guys. My wife is black. My kids are black. Like, like, what are we talking about here? So before you get all offended and say I'm racist, go fuck yourselves because it's nonsense. Because I, if she was a black girl, I promise to God, if she was a black girl and Angel Reese was a white girl, the white people in America would say, you know what? Angel Reese sucks. And the black people in America would say, God, Caitlin Clark's a fucking beast. The same way they're speaking about Arika Agungbawale, who shoots 9 for 25 on average, she's a 36% shooter. Did you know up. that freaking she gets Jewel... Lo uh -huh. She gets it up. She gets 25 shots a game. And you know who else? Jewel Lloyd is shooting 34.3% from the field. You like numbers? How about those numbers? Diana Taurasi is shooting worse than Caitlin Clark this season. So this nonsense. It's nonsense. <laughs> and yet... This is the type of garbage. So I had a, I, I, I mean, I have a, a fraternity brother who's a, who's, a, who's a professor who responded to this garbage. And then I followed up with him because you know what? I get called names. I really do. I get called names of people I know. Yeah. And, and the same person says, Paige Bukers is better than Caitlin Clark. 
Maybe she is. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe she is. Maybe. But you know what? Maybe she isn't. And for you, and, and you know what? Caitlin Clark beat her ass when it mattered. Uh, the know. same, the same argument you use against Clark when you say, "Well, Angel Reese won a ring." Yeah, as the fourth leading scorer, as the fourth leading scorer that night, in which she needed her teammate who didn't score one point in the final four semifinal game to score twenty-two and hit seven threes in a 17-point game, and have their best shooting per performance of the season that night. It took the best game LSU could play With all to America. get that. With all America. And, and Clark had 30 that night. So the weakness, the, the softness, the your safety. Andrea Carter. Oh, Andrea Carter's an embarrassment, man. If Andrea Carter ever speaks to Andrea Carter's entire career on ESPN has been based on the success of Caitlin Clark. She's two years with ESPN, the two best years in college women's basketball, featuring Caitlin Clark. She said because of the physicality. The physicality of the women of the international yeah. game. You're gonna be playing with the best players on the in, in the world on the women's. N time. Name me one player who plays for Spain. Name me a player who plays for Japan. You don't know. And we don't know any of them, and we'll never know them because we're not going to watch the damn games no. because Caitlin Clark won't be playing them. No. <clears throat> the women's committee. No, talking about the men's side. Now that's different. They do play physical, but we no, the we, men. But the, but the, but we, we also them. know that the men are are NBA players. Yes. Yes. Like you're playing, them. like 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 you're playing Luka Doncic. Yes, on different teams. You're playing Giannis. You're playing yeah. pros. Yeah. And and, and they close the gap. Overseas on WNBA hasn't hasn't got like that yet. God, uh, they tough. I don't I don't know. That was, if if, if overseas cool. was so good, they would have brought all these Russians and all these Go Turkish ahead. people and French people and African players, and they'd all be playing in the WNBA right now. But they're not. It, 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 there's I mean, a few. There's yeah. a few, but largely they're not. <laughs> the decision that they made is catastrophic. I'm not gonna say it's catastrophic, but it's a, a, a massive. It, it, it hurts yeah, it's the the WNBA's ability to market yeah, internationally yeah, it's, it's, and the brand. The bigger, it's the bigger picture of branding, yeah. and the brand of the WNBA is still not great. And I don't care what shill man comes out and says. I've been watching Angel Reese. Or I've been watching Asia Wilson. Or I've been watching, like, no you, no, you haven't. You didn't hear Angel Reese's name until the national championship. And by that point, guess whose name we'd heard of a lot? Caitlin Clark had been featured on SportsCenter shooting 30-footers all season two years ago. Before Angel Reese. Before Angel Reese's name ever came in your mouth. Because we all know who LSU was. It was Kim Mulkey. The loud, obnoxious, white lady coach. They said who wore the wild ass shit. They know it was because of this. And, they, and it was only because Angel Reese decided to do this type of bullshit two inches from freaking Caitlin Clark's face. They were winning. After they're up 15, but, and you had almost nothing to do with it. When people say that, that, that changed it. It was like. And no. then you followed her around the court doing it. Because. Like a fucking idiot. To do it, and, to, her, to, do it to her because she was already a name, a made name. That's how you made yourself. That's how you made yourself. It's okay to say that's how you made yourself, but no one knew because when when she transferred from Maryland to LSU, nobody knew who she was. She was a really good player at Maryland. She was. I'm giving she I'm giving her her flowers. She was a really good player at Maryland. She was not a known commodity internationally. She became a lot well better known because she went to a better team coached by one of the loudest and most known coaches in the history of women's basketball. And that is what got her on the, on the screen. Yeah. Kim Mulkey got that team on the screen. Because yep. if you had anybody else coaching LSU, first off, she would never have transferred to LSU. And second, they wouldn't have been on television if she did. Uh, but but Caitlin Clark put 5.6 million people on watching her on television in the Final Four two years ago against South Carolina. 
and 3.4 million watched the game before that with Angel Reese. So where were all the people that loved Angel Reese so much then? They didn't know who she was. They didn't find out her name until she played Caitlin Clark. And in fact, she wasn't the villain going into the national championship. No, she made herself the villain. She made that herself after her antics at the end of that game, for which she doesn't, she's not even guarding the woman busting 30 on their yeah, ass. But if you're going to make yourself embrace it, I don't care. Yeah. Do it. Embrace the villain role. You know what? The Rock did it. Stone Cold did it. Hulk Hogan did it. Everybody's done it in wrestling. And if you play the villain long enough, you become the hero. Yeah. And if you play the hero long enough, you become the villain. Yeah. And Caitlin Clark is the villain for some yeah. people. Now. For a lot of people. Yeah. Because they think she's being handed stuff because she's white. Yeah. Or because she's not a lesbian. Or a combination of both. And then they're completely discrediting her entire career, averaging 32 as a senior, leading the country in points and assists while shooting 47% from the field and leading two undermanned teams to the national championship game in back-to-back -back seasons. Undermanned is fuck. Undermanned. Andrea Carter, let's bring her back up. Andrea <laughs> Carter picked them to lose in every single round after the first round. Picked. That's Virginia, picked Colorado, picked um, LSU, picked UConn, and of course she picked South Carolina. I guess she got one right after five attempts. Mm. But that's, but that's, that's, so you got, you became famous and known, and now Stephen A. Smith, the dumbass he is, brings these women on his show, and now they, it, 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 you keep them on long enough to just try to embarrass you on your own show. Because nobody knew who her name was. And I don't want to hear her opinion on basketball. I don't want to hear freaking Monica McNutt's opinion on basketball. I don't want to hear Chini Ogumuke's opinion on basketball, men's basketball. I don't, want to hear about, I don't want to hear their opinions on men's basketball. They didn't play. They didn't play. Yeah, I didn't play either. You don't want to hear mine either. But I don't want to hear theirs. You know what I did? I coached. I coached high-level boys basketball, and I would take a high school boys basketball team against any freak, any group of all. the U.S. women's national team can go play against. Oh, without Caitlin Clark, by the way, because you won't have that shooter. Take those twelve women and put them against Montverde Academy, and Montverde will beat them by seventy fucking points. Beat them by seventy fucking points. It would be like the it would be the drubbing of the century, and they'd never do it because it would show just how much of a difference there is between women's basketball and men's basketball. So, so I take, I take, so I got to the point where I, I take it for what it is, right? I'm starting to accept it, you know, that I'm going to see 40% shooters and 38% shooters. Every game. I'm not, I'm accepting it. I'm not going to fight against it anymore. I'm going to appreciate it. Um, y'all got me tuned in. I'm watching. I'm, I mean, I'm not an avid watcher. I got to just go run and see it unless, I mean, Caitlin, Caitlin, just a needle mover. I'll go watch her. And I will watch Reese if she's on TV, but she's not on TV much. You have to buy league Mar pass. Mar Marvin paid for the league pass that he never watches. I'm not buying league pass. And it's not on. And now apparently Boozer is on league pass, is claiming that he watches all of Reese's games too. But yeah. I'm sure he doesn't pay $1 for league pass. Yeah, so uh, y'all got me tuned in. I, I am a, I'm going to say I'm a fan. I, I watch it. I'm here now. It's just, I mean, we do a podcast about sports and it's intriguing and we have to talk about it and there's nothing enough for me to watch, so and and I'm enjoying it, ladies. Keep doing what y'all doing, but don't bite the hand that feeds y'all. Keep keep balling. Cause when I watch and I and 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 Caitlin's not playing or she's playing and I'm watching the other other player, show me what you got. Here, what, what, here here's what's gonna happen. So, so no, so uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Here's what's gonna happen. Like it happens every year in the All Star Game. The Olympics are still two months away. Oh, she'll be on the team. She'll be on the team. She'll be someone's on. gonna someone's gonna get hurt. She'll be on the team. And she'll be on the team. She'll be on the team. And 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 that will hopefully this could have been a strategic move because okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hope to give a, cre a credit and I hope that my mind thinks like theirs should think was that you don't put her on the team initially. Why? Because you don't wanna offend and all these good. petty ass old broads. Yeah, old broads who have been complaining about her and talking shit about her and don't think she's earned it yeah. and yeah. Put, th put them on. Yeah. One of them will get hurt Somebody. Or, mo mo or more than one will get hurt. Yeah. 
And then there'll be decision be to be, who do you replace them with? Because you're going to have to replace them. And now you put and now you put Caitlin Clark on that team. No matter if it's a guard. I don't care what it is. Why is Brittany Griner on the team? She had retired last year, and now she's not retired, and she's played two games this year. And so we put the woman that was in a Russian prison for a year, who we had to give up a war criminal to get. I know we're going into politics, but Kyrie Irving posts some crap about a book. And that's the reason he can't be on the U.S. men's team. You think Kyrie Irving's better than Drew Holiday? Mm. You think, yeah, you know oh, he is. Not, not, not talent wise, but for what you, they you know, you know he is. He's, he's a better player. Bring, for what they bring to the team, they need different people for different positions. I need a better. Bam team. Adebayo had some level of audacity to say that we don't need to have nothing but scores. We need people that will play roles. Yeah, Bam, we know you're not going to score. <laughs> Man, we, we don't expect you to score. We know you can't. You can barely score when you're playing in the regular season with the Heat. So it's no problem for you to just go rebound and freaking and play defense. So, so he, he but, to, but that but that team, I mean, largely a, is a bunch of old guys. You have to build a team. Yeah, you have to build a team. Drew Holiday is going to play defense. You know, he's going to sit in that stool against when he play against those other guards and that's around the NBA. That's on a different team. You need a Drew Holiday. Do you I mean, what, I mean, Jimmy have, Butler's not. I mean, is have, Kawhi Leonard going to play? The man got hurt in the playoffs. He probably won't play. But you have enough offense on that team where you know Kyrie. You you can make but, a point. But, but Kyrie, Kyrie was not put on there for political reasons. But that's not the reason. You, we all right, we get that. It's not because that's of why he didn't not, get make the team. He was not put on there because of political stuff. Yeah. He was Mister Non COVID, not Mister Non Vax, Mister This, Mister That. He's been the scapegoat. I know, I know we've talked about him for bas for the Celtics thing now, but. Nonetheless, Kyrie maybe, Irving still oh, player for player is as good as there notice, is. Maybe they notice what we notice. He's the most <clears throat> consistently inconsistent, but he doesn't have to be consistent in the in the in the Olympics. Like he he doesn't have to start. Like that's the thing. Like they're acting like you put Caitlin Clark on this damn team and then she has to start. No, no she, one says she has to start. No, but mind she, you, even though I know she's better than Kelsey Plum right now, but we she's know better than Kelsey Plum right now. She's better than Chelsea Gray right now. I don't have to. If you give. If, Put Caitlin Clark on that the a- Aces squad. Put Kelsey Plum on the Indiana Fever. <laughs> if that's the case, Caitlin Clark's averaging 12 assists because she's averaging six and a half right now she's averaging with, 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 with women that can't catch. She's averaging 12 with the Aces. She's averaging 12 with the Aces. And she's probably averaging 22 to 24 points. That's what we thought was going to happen with Aaliyah. Because I'm watching, because I watched, did you watch the game after? With Aaliyah, and we're finding out Aaliyah. Yeah, we're finding out Aaliyah Boston just isn't very good. Not that good. Did you watch the game after against Seattle? No, I didn't. I heard the Aces? See, that's the thing. They were hoping that people would stay and watch that next game. Most people turned it off. I watched it in bits and pieces, looking up and down, looking up and down, and what have you. The actions that the Aces and Seattle run for their Best players are good. Are good. They're running plays for their best players. They're running movement to get their best players the ball and get them open. Indiana, I'm watching at times where I'm sitting like Clark gives up the ball. She stands in the freaking wing and then nothing happens after that. Nothing happens. She stands there. No one comes to set a back screen for her to curl around. So is she just supposed to run in circles? <laughs> like that's the thing. Like, Steph Curry doesn't just run in circles. They give the ball. He's out. running off of screens to get open, and when she's not they, with the ball, they run nothing. Ran play. They ran a play where the three girls ran to her, and then they got uh, that one play. You saw yeah. that play. The one play. Yeah. They ran an action where she kicked down into the into the paint, yep. kicks back up, yep. cuts back up to the top of the key. Yep. Three of them follow her. Girl in the corner is wide open. Hit her three they, bucket. That was the first time I've seen them run an action f- involving her, and because of her presence, and that's why she has a teammate wide open. It'll, make her miss. She's wide open. Yeah. And and that's why when people ask me about better players, sometimes they go, no. I'd be like, sometimes it's about impact. Your impact can be better than your numbers. And that's that play just shows it right there. But, yeah. I, um, I, all right. We, we done. I, I, think, I think it's a horrendous decision. I'm going to give them – I'm going to hope that they're – they did it strategically expecting someone to get injured. Now someone gets injured and she doesn't make me on the team. I mean, that's a different story. But to not put her on the team, I, I thought that was a massive mistake. You have momentum from this woman. You and I are not watching the game at 2 o'clock in the morning if she's not playing in it. Um, 
I, you're not. What time? It's eight, it's, if it's 8 o'clock here, it's 2 a.m. in France, right? I'd rather watch the local YMCA game. I would, too. I'd rather <laughs> watch you, you and Boozer play at the local gym on Friday mornings yeah, at 6 a.m. Yeah. Because I, I, I can't. You're not going to get me to sit and watch that, that shit. You're not. Yeah. No. And if you look at the names on this list, I mean, I could question a bunch of them. I don't look. I don't think Caitlin Clark's the best player in the league. Don't get it twisted. I do not think she's the best player in the league. But if you're building a roster. But if I'm building a roster and you're sitting here telling me that because she's on the team, they're not going to win. You don't even have to have her on the ball. No. But if you do, people are going to be wide open all game, and they're going to. And if they're single covering her, she's going to get easy shots. Or 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 if they're. Hard on her. She's not on the ball, and she's in the corner. They're not leaving. open. <laughs> They're not leaving her. So other people are wide open. Like can you imagine dumping the ball into Asia Wilson with single coverage, oh, and you God. can't double down on her because Caitlin Clark's in the corner. Yes. Like oh my God, God. like Next they, oh, Lord. they blew it. They they blew it. But you know what? It's it's not it's not a surprise. This is how this entire women's basketball shit is marketed. It's so marketed weird. like trash. By people that never went to school, clearly for marketing 101. <laughs> and they have no interest in making money. Their concern is other nonsense and keeping people's feelings happy. So that's, that's what it comes down to. I, I, I've given up trying to figure it out. I mean, I know what it is. I don't, and, but her coach, God. Yeah. I, you, 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 that coach. Yeah. All right. I'm pretty sure by Wednesday, we'll have a lot more to dive in on this topic about. Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more statements coming up from different people, and we have to dive in about it. But for Absolutely. tonight, we will be wrapping it up. Rudy, we're supposed to be on there for 20 minutes. We have well, you to... asked the question about Caitlin, I but know, that was I your know. fault. I did it to myself. But I'm about to go in, in the room with my, with my fiance and rub up on her tonight. No, you're not. You want to sleep. Anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm still going to try. You got to be up at 5 a.m., dude. Um, so, yeah, that, that wraps it up for us for Come On Now, the podcast, a special edition of uh, Game 2. Game 2 <laughs> recap slash Caitlin Clark explosion. Take, we'll see you on over. Wednesday. They're huh? taking over. They're taking over. They're, They're taking over. They're getting what they want. We're talking about it. We're here. Keep us, yep. keep us locked in, baby. Keep us we'll here. see you Tuesday. All, All right, right, man.